Hi folks, thanks so much for joining us today to talk about uh, Microsoft tips and tricks in Office 365. We are gonna be very uh, cognizant of your time and keep it to 20 minutes. My name is Gar Whaley. I'm the CRO and co-founder of Teal. With me, I have Reed Johnston. He is my partner, a co-founder of Teal and operates as our CIO. Today, Reed and I are both having some bandwidth problems, so we may have to turn off our videos when we share screens, but we're going to work through it. Um, that said, Reed, what are we going to be talking about first? So we're going to start off with some tips and tricks in Microsoft Teams, because we're using Teams every day, and it's uh, let's find ways to be more productive in Teams. Yeah, one of the things that I have a lot of trouble with as you're starting to share your screen and turn off your video to save your bandwidth yeah. is searching in teams like we have so many chats in teams and then i want to go back and find uh find things and i can never find them so how, how how do we go about searching in teams yeah so rather than clicking around all over teams i like to use Control e and when you use that keyboard combination it's going to pop up in the search box right at the top of your screen from there, you can type in somebody's name like Gar, or I can type in Tony, and it'll let me jump right to a chat with that person. But not only can you find people that way, you can find files, you can find group chats, and you can find teams and channels. So if I say marketing, uh, it'll take me right to the marketing team. So I use the search all the time to help me jump back and forth within Microsoft Teams and get right to those messages that I'm looking for. So interesting. One of the things I have uh, trouble with is I know you and I had a conversation about something. Yeah. Um, and so I already know it's in a chat between you and I, but is there a way that I can get to that chat and search within that chat? Yep, absolutely. So that is control F. And when I do that, it's gonna open up this side panel. And now I can search for something that you and I were talking about in this chat. So I'll say Copilot, and it's going to show me all of the different chat messages where we mentioned Copilot. Now, if I go back and do control E here at the top of the screen, I could say Copilot here. And what it'll do is it's going to find messages where we've talked about Copilot anywhere within Teams. But if I'm all, if I only want to find messages with you, it's that Control F, since I've got this chat window open with you right now. Um, Reed, that that raises another question for me that I didn't I didn't really think of, which is how do you, so are you saying I can search for messages? where you and I have talked about Copilot, but it could be in a, it could be in a channel, it might not be in the Teams uh, chat, just you and I. Does that yep. make sense? Exactly. So that's where I always start with Control E to open Control up that e. window at the top. And then I can search for any word here and it's going to find all of the messages where we've been mentioning Copilot with you, with me, with other people in the organization. Great, great. Hey, switching, uh, staying in Teams, but switching to another uh, very cool feature I learned from you recently, I think you did a LinkedIn post, uh, is called Collaborative Invites. Can you show yeah. a little bit about Collaborative Invites? Yeah, so the main takeaway here is don't send your Teams meeting invites from Outlook. Generate them in Teams instead. So I'm going to go into my calendar. I'm going to just pull this off the screen real quick. I'm going to open up my calendar and I'm going to click the new meeting button. When I click on new meeting, it's going to open up a meeting window here and I can give this meeting a title. I'll say read and gar one on one. I'm going to add you to the meeting. I can start typing in your name. Now, normally we would put our agenda for the meeting right here in the meeting details. But if you go a little bit farther and click add an agenda, it's going to create a Microsoft loop component. Now the loop component is a collaborative workspace where I can type in topics for the agenda. So we'll say marketing, sales, um, operations, 
and it's adding these items to this loop component. When I send you this invite for 1030 to 11, I'm going to hit send. You'll be able to go into your Outlook and you'll see the agenda and you can also add items to the agenda. So I'm going to open it back up again. Now I'm back in Teams. I've found our meeting and I can scroll down and I've got that loop component. You can add. Oh, no, there you are. You popped right into it. So you can add items. And if you're able to do that while we're in this meeting or while we're here, there, there's your little cursor. So now before the meeting, we can type in items that we want to talk about. And during the meeting, we can add collaborative meeting notes. We can enter tasks for follow up items and so on. This is way better than this static part of the meeting invitation that we're all used to. Yeah, so Reed and I use this in all of our meetings now, certainly between ourselves, but with our teams as, as well. Um, and we also just, if we're in a chat and we want to have an ongoing conversation, we will start a loop right within the chat. Um, I don't yeah. know if you can show that real quick, Reed. That just came to me, but we use that a lot. Yeah, rather than typing a bunch of messages about something that we want to go back and forth on, you can click on this insert loop component button and it will add that loop component right into our chat. So I can call this ideas and I can hit send. So now we have this collaborative space in our chat that we can type in and add other items to um, idea one, idea two, idea three, and you're able to go in there and contribute as well. And this way we don't have lots of back and forth meetings. It's like we're working on a collaborative document. Hey, Reed, not something that we were going to talk about today, but something I realized I did not do before this. And I think it might be helpful for some of the viewers. I, I see we have a few clients on here as well. Um, how do you set yourself to do not disturb in Teams? Oh, yeah. So right up at the top. I realized when you were Teamsing me right now, you guys might have heard in the background that my my Teams was going off because I didn't set myself to do not disturb. Yep. So right at the top, you can click on your little logo and you can select do not disturb, available, busy. You can set a duration for how long you want to be do not disturb and it'll take you out of it, uh, say, after an hour or after today or whatever the case may be. All right. Next up is something I use quite a bit. We're going to talk about it in Outlook in a few minutes as well, but um, it's also the uh, ability to send later in teams. My business case for this is a lot of times I'm working on the weekend um, and I might have an idea that I want to send to Brittany, um, but I don't want to interrupt uh, her, her, her weekend. So I'll use the send later option. Can you show that? Yeah. So as you're typing a message, go over here to the little arrow to send it. But instead of pressing the left button, you can right click and it'll pop up a window that lets you select when you want to send this message. Now, you can't send it at an exact, you know, 1032. It's at the top of the hour and at the half hour. But once I pick a time and hit continue, now it's telling me here on the screen that it's going to send it later. And it, it queues it up for later today. Fantastic. Um, another thing that uh, we think is pretty neat that I use a lot, especially with Reed, is to let me know when Reed's available. Um, so, Reed, can you show how you would tag me uh, yeah. to notify you when, when I become available in Teams? So, in your chat list, you have your, your conversation threads with your different team members. You can right-click on the team member and select Notify When Available. So now Gar has a little red dot there because he's in a meeting right now. But when he would turn green like Catherine is, I'll get a little pop up on my screen that'll tell me that he's available. And you can't see it in the in the meeting that we're in right now because it's an overlay window. But I get a little pop up that says Gar is available. Yeah, I did go available to try to demo that, but obviously it won't work why we're why we're in the meeting. Um, so the last thing uh, we wanted to look at in Teams was something a little bit fun, um, and that's avatars, how to set up your personal avatar or turn it on. Yeah. So if you're in a meeting, 
I'm going to try, let me see if I can, I'm going to drag this off my screen real quick. I'm going to do meet now, start a meeting, join. So here I'm in, I'm in my Teams meeting and I don't have my camera on, but I can select the down arrow and there's an option here for avatars. When you click on avatars, you have some options for turning on an avatar and I've already built one. I've got a guy with a hat. So when I say turn on avatar, now you can see my avatar. I can go back into the camera options under more settings and your little avatar can wave at people. You can have a little thinking. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can put your avatar into different backgrounds as well. Um, it's pretty cool. If you're not ready to be on camera, but want to have a presence in the meeting. Yeah. Just a fun little thing that we use infrequently, but thought we'd share. All right, switching over to Outlook, let's jump right into Send Later. This is actually more applicable to my work style. Um, I'm usually not in Teams on the weekend, but I may be working and I may have a great idea that I want to share with Brittany. Again, I don't want to send her an email on um, on uh, uh, on Sunday. Uh, so, and I don't want to go into my draft folder that has the 30 emails I want to send out over the weekend. So I just set it to Send Later. Yeah, so... When you're in Outlook and you're composing a new message, rather than just clicking send, click on that down arrow right next to send and you can click schedule. Click schedule and it'll give you some options tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, or you can pick a custom time. And now this is where I could say 805 and pick an exact time on when I want my message to be sent. And when I click send, it disappears and it'll show the message in my outbox just waiting to be sent. Great, so the next thing is something I think you shared on LinkedIn last week. Um, Reed is uh, notorious for sharing uh, tips and tricks uh, on his LinkedIn feed, but that is how do you take an email and get it to chat? So a yeah. lot of times what we try to do is communicate um, to a group of people through email, um, but we also want it in chat so we can have an ongoing conversation. And the typical way to do that is just, you know, copy and paste, but there's a better way, right? Yeah. The better way is when you're looking at your email, you can go into this apps button or depending on how your screen is set. If I, if I shrink my screen down a little bit, I can click on apps and then I've got this option that says send to teams. When I click on that, it's going to open up a new window and I've got to, I've got to wait a second, I guess, for it to pop up. Try it again here. Yeah, it's not popping up, of course. Let me try it. Let me reload this window and see if I have better luck. Send. Well, the, the Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft glitches can happen in live events too. Um, but basically what, what happens is when you click on, this apps and then send to teams what it should do is open up a little message window that you can pick who you want to send that message to and then it will take this email and it will actually bring it right into your team's chat so you'd be able to select i can select gar and then i can type in a message and it brings this entire email directly into our team's chat i'm going to Give Reed, let me share. Uh, let me share real quick, and I'll see if I can. Um... Yeah, go ahead. That'd be great. Let's see if it'll let me stop sharing. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, it won't let me share right now. So, apologize for that because it is working for me. Um, of course. The other thing you could show, though, to, to show another way to do it is go in, share your screen, go into a channel and uh, write, you know, sh uh, get an email address for the channel. That's a different way to accomplish the same task. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying there. Let me reshare my screen here because that that is a that is a, a good idea. Click share. Oh, I've requested share. There we go. Share my screen. There we go. So 
Now I'm back into Teams and I've got a marketing channel. If I want to send an email to this channel, I can click on the three little dots next to the channel and click Get Email Address. Every channel that you have in Teams has its own email address. So I can copy this, I could save this in my Outlook, and anytime I send an email to this address, it's gonna put that message right here in the general marketing channel. I use that one quite a bit. I didn't learn about the other one that you went over previously till recently, so I use this one quite a bit. Um, we have about five minutes left. Again, we want to be very precise with our time and not uh, go too long. If anybody has any questions, I probably should have said at this beginning, please put them in the QA channel. Um, we have a, quite a few more things to get to. We won't get to all of them uh, today, but we'll do them next month. Um, Read the next one. Uh, I want to sort of skip ahead and go to Copilot because really AI and Copilot is really what's making the news these days. From a Copilot um demonstration some of the things that we talk about a lot are uh summarizing a pdf document so somebody sends you a pdf document it's very long is there a way to summarize it yeah so i'm in copilot so um i've opened up my browser and it says outlook but it's really copilot.microsoft.com when you sign in to copilot most users are going to have one option. It's going to say web because you don't have a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, but everybody has free access to copilot.microsoft.com. When I select work, it gives me access to my internal data within my Microsoft tenant. But for this example, we'll just use web today because this is what everybody has access to. So down here, I've got the option of asking a question. I can have Copilot create some content for me. I can have Copilot analyze data. One of the options is to add a file. And when I click add a file, it's going to open up a window and I'll be able to select a file on my system. So I'm going to do that really quick here. Just a moment. And click open. So I've selected a PDF document that is really a presentation about our IT services. So I can say, summarize this document. I gotta spell it right. Summarize this document. So Microsoft is gonna read that document very quickly and give me a breakdown of what the different components of the document are. So in this document, we went over what are our IT services? What are our integrated cybersecurity services and different add-ons that we have available? So that's pretty cool. And that's, that's awesome. this, this document is about 15 pages long. That's that's really great. Um, uh, Haley asked a question. I'm going to try to get to that, but I want to talk. I want you to maybe talk for just a minute, Reed, about um, commercial data protection and how are we protecting company data within Copilot? It's not yeah. really a demo, but it's more of your thoughts on that. So this is really important. When you're using an internet service that's free, the price of the service is really your data. So when you're using a free account with ChatGPT, OpenAI is taking the information that you're putting into ChatGPT and it is using that to train their system. Well, Microsoft's implementation of Copilot, they advertise a commercial data protection service. I have Microsoft licensing, I have a Microsoft account that I'm paying for, and when I'm using Copilot, Microsoft is keeping all of my data within my Microsoft tenant, and no one else has access to it, and they're not using my data to train the AI. When I mentioned earlier that there's additional licensing, that's to use the work features of Copilot, but everybody can use the web features and you can benefit from that commercial data protection because you already have a Microsoft account. Oh, Gar, you might be muted there. 
you're talking. Sorry, sorry, Reed. Um, <laughs> uh, Haley is asking, what is your favorite tip for Word or Excel? I'm not, I'm not sure that we're ready to demo something, so I'm not sure you probably can end your screen share and put your camera back on unless you want to demo something. I definitely have an answer to that, but ask, the question was asked to you. Sure. Well, my favorite feature now within Microsoft Word is the integration of Copilot for creating content in a first draft. And that would really be a good thing for us to do our next webinar on how you can use Copilot and the other Microsoft apps. Yes, Haley, great question. Um, my favorite thing is uh, similar to Reads. What I use it for in Word is I actually write a document and then I ask it to improve the document. Um, mm -hmm. But more importantly for me, I think, is uh, writing Excel formulas. So usually if I have a um, somewhat of a complex formula, but for me that <laughs> uh, I'm sort of simple, so that might not be complex for the rest of the world, but um, I'll have uh, I'll I'll use Copilot to type it in English language and it will output the actual formula for me right within yeah. the Word document. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry, within the Excel spreadsheet. So, yeah, we'll do that next month. So, Reed, we're one minute over, but Haley asked a good question, so I wanted to get to that. Folks, we're going to be doing this monthly, and if you want to follow us on um, LinkedIn, uh, we're sharing a lot of these tips and tricks as they come up. Every month we're going to be going through tips and tricks and we're trying to lean forward into what Microsoft has has released recently. So, Reed, thanks so much. We'll see you again next month. Thanks, folks, for joining us. Uh, have a great have a great rest of your day. See you guys later.